our taxpaying citizens here in the 8th District, they deserve smooth streets. We deserve to feel safe. We deserve to, you know, be able to open up a business in our district and know that it's going to thrive. So you think the Democratic Party cares about Black people? Believe it or not, Rex, I think that tweet is part of the problem. Do you feel like we could have addressed this homeless issue much sooner? You have to speak a word, make it a good one. Welcome back to The Word. I'm Jackie Ray. It is election season once again. So I want to encourage everyone to make sure you visit lbpost.com. We're going to have everything you need to make an informed decision in March, including compare your candidates. We're going to do some debates. And then here on The Word, I'm going to get you as many candidates as I can so you can get to know them personally, find out their background and what they see for the future of Long Beach. I'm really excited For today's guest, Dr. Sharifa Batts, thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate you for being here. We had to move our schedule around, you guys, and she was so flexible with me, so gracious, and I thank you so much for that. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm with you. Today's just been a crazy day, but hey, that's why we remain fluid and flexible. (laughs) Right, right. We made it happen. Um, I'm so fascinated by your background because it's so diverse. You... um, you're Dr. Sharifa Batts. You've worked with the ports. You are a community leader. It's so diverse. I had a hard time figuring out where to start with this, but I want to start your, your doctorate. Where, what is your uh, background as far as your education goes? Great. Well, thank you for asking. And I am um, very appreciative of being here. Um, so thank you for inviting me so that your listeners because can have an informed decision, right? Yes. Um, so I am proud that I was born and raised in Long Beach. I attended local public schools, started at Lafayette Elementary in Madison up to the third grade. Then my dad talked to my mom into moving to Seal Beach, where I attended mm-hmm. schools in the Los Alamitos district. And that's where I excelled in academics and athletics and have always taken on leadership roles to serve the community. In my eighth grade year, my mom and dad unfortunately split. So along with my mom and my brothers, we moved back to Long Beach. But my mom was adamant that I finished my high school years where I started um, and was at. So I stayed in that district where I excelled in sports. I was on varsity cheer, varsity track. Nice. And I was elected junior class president at Los Alamitos High School. So at that time, I was informed that I was the first African-American and first girl to be elected to that position. And then I ran for ASB president in my senior year. And I was the first African-American and female to serve in that position as well. So when I was 15, got my first job at Athlete's Foot at the Long Beach Mall. And (laughs) after graduating high school, I attended and graduated from Long Beach City College, where I ran track. And I was the two-time conference champ and state champ in the 400 meter hurdles, ran under the great Ron Alice and Coach Elias and Coach Richardson. And then I earned a scholarship in track and field and transferred to San Diego State University where I was also the two-time conference champ, state champ, and went to the Olympic trials in 96 for the 400 meter hurdles. That's amazing. I earned my BA degree in political science there, came back home to Long Beach and began my career um, and started working at Hanjin Terminal at the Port of Long Beach, which was at Marine Terminals, but it's now known as Ports America. We're the largest stevedore company in the U.S., And this is where I climbed through the ranks of customer service, health, safety, and environment, where I now serve as the head of environment and sustainability. Um, So my job there is basically I implemented effective safety protocols to help the longshoremen and other port workers return home safe to their families while also protecting the environment. So after my husband and I raised our two daughters who attended Longfellow Hughes and Long Beach Poly, that's where I was the PTA president, grad night president. Mm -hmm. the teachers' luncheons at both Hughes and Polly. Um, but after my girls, we got them off to college. I said, you know what? It's time for me to go back. So I went back to Pepperdine University and I earned my MBA and joined the inaugural doctorate group. So I got my doctorate in business administration as well from Pepperdine University. Like I said, I want to make sure people get to know you personally. I am so f- I ran track in high school as well, but those 400 meter hurdles, I was like, who going to be jumping over stuff for 400 meters? That's too much. So I, I applaud you for doing that. But with going to the Olympic trials and things of that nature, did you did you think that your that your future as far as your career would be in sports and athletics? Or did you always know that this is just something that's happening right now? I 
thought that it was something that was happening right now. And so mm -hmm. I, I came with this fork in the road because I had my oldest daughter in 95. Okay. And I quickly, in April of 95, and I quickly got back into shape by November of 95 and qualified for the Olympic trials in January of 96. Wow. So it was a fast transition. Um, but then once, you know, you see your beautiful child, you're kind of at that point of, do I keep running and doing this or do I do the family thing? And I chose the family route. And so that's where when I came back to Long Beach, I'm like, you know, I just wanted to be 100 percent parent. Right? right. So that's where I got all my involvement into the schools and helping out in the community that way. So born and raised in Long Beach, your life is entirely entrenched in Long Beach. What are some of the things that you've seen as far as changes in Long Beach, both positive and negative uh, over your lifetime? Oh, that's a great one. So I had a unique perspective by attending school in Los Alamitos, but living mm -hmm. in Long Beach because um, it was different. You know, okay. when I'm driving to school, I'm like, man, you know, you're going through potholes and you know, you're, I stayed <laughs> off of 10th and Rose, which, you know, wasn't the best neighborhood. Um, right. So you did witness drug dealing going on. You're hearing constantly the fire trucks and the police cars. But then all of a sudden you cross over the hill into the Los Alamitos area and the streets are smooth. And I'm like, what's the difference? Why is it that it's so nice over here and you don't mm -hmm. see homeless people or drug dealing going on. But as soon as I cross over the hill, it's different, right? So I, I got a unique perspective when it came to observing the differences between a city that's right here. It's a sister city, right? right. It's just right over the bridge. And I, it was always something to where I'm just like, mom, I don't understand, mom. And so finally, after I got my doctorate, my mom's like, quit complaining and get out there now and do something to go and help your community. And having six grandchildren, each of my daughters have three. I don't know if they were in competition or what, but <laughs> within five years, we got six grandbabies and they're wow. literally four, three, two, one. I just completed my VIPs login for the kindergartner. <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, but just, it's so motivating and inspirational to see this young generation, right? And you want... Our, our taxpaying citizens here in the 8th District, they deserve smooth streets. We deserve to feel safe. We deserve to, you know, be able to open up a business in our district and know that it's going to thrive. We pay taxes mm -hmm. just like everybody else, right? And those are all things that I want to be the champion for. I want to be able to dive in there and I'm a doer not just talk about things that we need to do, but I want to get in there and actually help to transform, to make this district inclusive, safe, vibrant, you know, and livable for our mm -hmm. next generation. What, what are some areas where you feel that there's drastic neglect? I feel like potholes are just a Long Beach thing. I feel like I can't drive anywhere without paying very close attention to where I'm going. But aside from like the potholes, your area, District 8 specifically, what are some areas that have been neglected for a, quite a bit of time? So historically, unfortunately, um, north of Delamo has been mm -hmm. historically neglected. So the good thing is with the redistricting, we have a lot of opportunity to now address these, right? So the potholes, that's a major one. As I'm going door to door, people are like, can you just cut our trees? Can you fix our sidewalks? Wow. Can you make it so that when I'm walking, because we have our elders, we have people who are handicapped, so that we're not tripping. My grandkids, as I'm canvassing, they're trying to roll on their scooters and they have to stop, pick up their scooter to jump over all the, you know, different mm -hmm. bumps in the sidewalks. So definitely our sidewalks, our trees, our roads, and our homelessness has increased everywhere it has. But Again, this is something that needs to be addressed here as well. And just public safety. I have plenty of neighbors who have actually opened up businesses south of San Antonio. And their comment was, listen, I feel safer there. I feel mm -hmm. like I'm safer for my business to be there, that there won't be smash and grabs. And I can stay open a little bit later to generate money versus if I'm north of Delamo. 
I love that you said that. I read an article, I think it was a couple of months ago in the Washington Post, and they talked about exactly what you're talking about. Some of these, they're called, they called it blight. Sometimes in neighborhoods that have a lot of broken windows, rundown homes, that just invites crime. And, yep. and they did this study that says fixing these types of things, that does a lot to deter crime more than increased police presence. But here in our city, I've heard people say time and time again, they think we need more police really on the streets. How do you feel about that? And what do you think is, is maybe police presence is part of that, but what do you think the totality is that communities need to focus on to really make communities safe and bring businesses in that can give jobs to the community? So police is one component of it. You, you mm -hmm. do need someone who's going to enforce, but really what you need is a, is a collaborative community us working together. So my mother, Hattie Herring, she's the president of the Jackson Bret Hart Neighborhood Association. And we have partnered with other associations, um, with Donna from Ridgewood Triangle and Bixby Knowles Clean Streets. We got Grace over in Lindbergh at Ridgewood, and she focuses on the Bixby Clean Streets and Kasha with Bixby Highland. When you have leaders in each area and they're working with their streets, and their little neighborhood association, and we're all on the same page and we're all focusing. We just implemented the North Long Beach Clean Streets. And that was birthed from these other neighborhood associations who had already started, but now we got from Carson Street all the way up to Market. Mm -hmm. And every second Saturday we're coming together and we're working with the city of Long Beach, Vanessa, shout out to her and her team at the city with the clean team and Jim from the community development and councilman Al Austin's office with their support. We're all working. And I always say one team, one dream to clean our streets, because to your point, when people see trash, they have no problem throwing more trash, breaking windows. We just saw a box out there with a TV. It's like, who just throws a box on the middle of a street? You know, it's like, why are right. you doing this? And we have mm -hmm. kids that have to walk to school. They shouldn't have to walk to school and feel as if they are less than any other community where their children don't have to see this kind of stuff. Right. It should be a sense of pride when they are walking. We should have our windows, a beautification done for our small businesses, where when you're south of San Antonio, you want to walk into Bixby Joe's. You want to walk into Lola's and, you know, go and support these small businesses. You go north of Delamo, you're like, ooh, they, they don't, it's not as inviting. Mm -hmm. You want to go and support these businesses, but it is not um, as inviting as if you were south of San Antonio. And right. we need to all come together as a group because there's no reason why we should not be able to have just as inviting small shops that we are supporting, right? Mm -hmm. Our CVS just closed down in our Bixby No Shopping Center. You asked me what things have I seen? My mom worked at the Press Telegram for 17 years and her section was the Bixby No Shopping Section. Okay. So at 15 and 16, I was delivering the newspapers over to all the different businesses when there was Anthony's department store and, you know, all these different businesses when it was thriving. And then I saw where it went to where there was lots of closed businesses. Mm -hmm. Now, when you go into Vons, you have to push a button just to get your, you know, Advil and you have to wait wow, for someone yeah. to come. Right. Yeah. We lost Rite Aid. We lost CVS. Now, in order for us to go to CVS, we now have to go to Long Beach Boulevard in Delama. We yeah. have more fast foods in the 90805 than any other district. Right. You know, and we do, don't do you have, have grocery stores. Is it is it a food desert? We have we have Vons. You know, we do have a couple of grocery stores, but we don't have a healthy food choice here. Exactly. For yeah. our people. Right. And 90805, there was a study done and it's not just based on the environment, because as the head of environment and sustainability, this is something I'm really taking a deep dive into. But there were two studies done, one in 2010 and another it was around 2016, 17. But the residents in the 90805 zip code live on average about 14 and a half years less than any other zip code in Long Beach. 
Some of that has to do with the environment because we're settled in between the 710, the 405, the 91. We have the UP Railroad. We have the airport with planes going over. But it's also financial stress, right? There's many components in there. And so that's where we need to make more opportunities so that we can have good paying jobs, our people feel safe, and they want to stay living in this district. You know, in my district, I have my home, my daughter, if you look out my back door, two houses over, she owns that home with her family. My mother-in-law owns about 15 houses down that home. My sister-in-law owns the back and my youngest daughter and her family are in my rental unit next door. Nice. We are heavily invested here, not just in Long Beach, but here in this eighth district, mm -hmm. you know, and I don't want my grandkids to sell my home because they're like, honey, we don't feel safe or honey, I can't find a job. Long Beach is a nine person relay team, right? Eighth district is, is one leg of that relay team. But what mm -hmm. happens on a relay team when you have a lame duck, somebody who's not producing? When you yep. get to the finish line, you might not be right. the winner, right? Yep. You need to make sure all nine legs is strong, thriving, pumping, so that Long Beach as a whole is just strong at the finish line. Yes. And that's the champion I want to be for Long Beach. We need to strengthen this eighth district. Right. I can we, hear your passion when you talk about your district. And you said earlier that your mom told you, you know, stop talking about it. Do something about it. Can you recall what your very first act of community service and getting involved in community leadership was? It, it would start at the schools. Okay. Right. I started at the schools. And then um, I also was part of the um, advanced placement collaborative where we work to increase the number of students of color. Um, when it came to taking AP exams and that number increased from 300 to over, it was like 3000 and the district mm. received national recognition. And then from there, after I got my doctorate, because I focused on boards, all of a sudden it was just like my research predicted the recycling effect, the tapping in. So I got on the board of AAUW. I sit on the Long Beach City College Executive Board, which is near and dear to my heart because I'm in charge of student scholarships athlete mm -hmm. scholarships there. Um, and, and I sit on the YMCA Fairfield board, the St. Mary's board, and just really honing in part of leadership Long Beach, you know, because I felt, let me see another through another lens, right? Mm -hmm. And I applied for leadership Long Beach. I applied last year and I didn't get in. <laughs> but I actually, <laughs> I, they said they had a lot of candidates. I didn't get in, but they're like, just, just apply again. And I, I applied again because I wanted to go through the full 10 month program. I know I could have applied for the executive one, but I really wanted to learn what and get everything that leadership Long Beach could teach, right? Because you could be born and raised in Long Beach. And let me tell you, you learn something new every mm -hmm. day mm -hmm. and you're able to tap into those mentors through leadership Long Beach. And they just teach you so much about the ins and outs of the city of Long Beach. We're going to be planting 20 trees right here in the 8th district to try to, like I'm saying, help combat that environmental. It's not like I, my mom says, don't talk about it, do something about it. And that's right. what we're doing. We're picking up trash. We're planting trees because it starts on a small scale, right? Mm -hmm. You start small. And then I just completed up my job, the decarbonization roadmap. That's something then that I will move over. If I get elected, let's look at the decarbonization roadmap for this city here, right? Mm -hmm. we got, I know we got a plan, but we have to be aggressive with that plan for the members here in this eighth district. I want to circle back to, to your, your job working with the LA and then of course the port of Long Beach, because when I think of port of Long Beach, I think stay out the water <laughs> because it's, you know, just for me, now part of that is just because if I can, I, my dad always told me, if you can't see your feet, don't get in the water. <laughs> yeah. So that's just kind of how I think, but with your passion for environment and, and your desire to make sure that we have spaces where generations can live for years and years, generations to come. How are you impacting your position with the port of Long Beach? Oh, absolutely. I'm the head of environment and sustainability. So right. I sit on multiple um, little groups. Um, so with uh, NIMSA, which is the National Safety Maritime Association, 
Um, okay. We have PMSA. We have different groups um, with AAPC. What's PMSA? PMSA Pacific Merchant. PMS <laughs> Shipping <laughs> Association. Okay. <laughs> we have to make um, I know. I know. And then our Area Accident Prevention Committee, and that's where you have longshoremen, you have PMA, you have the employers who all are down at the port, and they just started an environmental committee as well. So okay. I sit on different committees. Because as we know, transportation contributes to at least 40% of our um, GHG emissions that go into the air that are harmful. And so working with all the different employers, of course, each port, Port of Long Beach and Port of Los Angeles, they both have goals in order to be carbon neutral. And so it takes, as we're saying, a group, each employer has to do their part. The port's just not going to do it on their own. So that's where I come into play, working with Ports America. California has the most stringent environmental laws. So implementing these laws and cascading them out, because we operate in over 30 ports in 70 locations across the U.S. So cascading out those um, procedures and protocols to the other ports, that also keeps them in compliance with federal and state regulations that they have going as well. I've noticed that there's always a difference. There's people who, from a very young age, knew they wanted to get into politics. And then there's people like yourself who have been community leaders, who've seen what's going on in their community and want to make a difference. And then we have community leaders that want to get into politics in, in order to affect change. I, I always ask this question, so I'm going to ask the same of you. As someone who's been a community leader, you're currently a community leader, do you think when you win that you will lose some of your voice and your ability to truly rally the people? Or do you think you'll gain more of a position to help the community? I believe that I will gain more of a position to help the community. Okay. Because again, naturally, I'm a doer. Naturally, mm -hmm. I'm a leader. And people, they look to me to implement change, come up with protocols, procedures, and implement it. And so I'm a solution-oriented individual, a lot of data-driven just because I'm just so used to school. Um, but for me, I'm just passionate about serving my community. And I believe that um, just from how I am with all the other boards, they immediately elect me to positions on these boards. <laughs> because they see, I, mean, that's, I mean, that's how communities are. Some right. people get in certain positions and they don't do anything. And right. it's like, well, why are you there if you're not doing something, right? I'm getting into a position and why I'm running is to do something. So I mm -hmm. believe that I will be able to do more. You know, one thing I do very well is I partner well with people. I'm able to connect with people, you know, so connecting with the other council people, you know, hey, using another set of eyes, let's look at your issues. And then can you come over here and help me with my issues? Let's partner together, mm -hmm. right? If you already have a best practice on how you solve this solution, let me adopt that best practice and, and right. use it as a key learning and implement it over here. Because I'm not about reinventing the wheel. If you got something right. that works, let's go. What are we waiting for? <laughs> You know, right. let's get into action. You need people. Let me go rally those people up and let's do it. You know, yeah. because one thing that I find, and this is something very much like even on the waterfront, if people tell me that there's a safety concern, if you do nothing about it, do you think they're going to come and tell me again that there's a safety concern? Mm -hmm. No, they're not. Mm -hmm. They're going to say, why am I going to tell you? Right. You know, it's falling on deaf ears. I've always learned if people trust you with information and trust that you're going to do something, then you better do something. Mm -hmm. Right. And if I get elected, people are trusting that I am going to make a difference for this eighth district. If you win, how important will community leaders be in helping you? Because you're still going to have a lot to balance at that time, especially now you're adding another hash mark on the things that you do. Um, how important will community leaders be in your in your ability to effectively help the, the 8th district? Oh, that'll be one of the first meetings I call all okay. community leaders to the table. It's not just because I'm elected. It's not a one person job. This right. is a community job. 
in order for us to have community change, it's it's like back in the day when it wasn't just one person that raised a kid. It was a village. Right. This is our village, right? Yeah. District 8 is a village. It mm-hmm. takes all of us. I need Ackerfield over here. I need Coolidge Park. I need over here at Jackson Park. I need Lindbergh, Ridgewood. Let's get, we're coming together. Yeah. Because every every little community within the 8th district has their own unique issues. Mm-hmm. Issues that are that that Coolidge Park residents have to deal with. Honestly, we don't deal with over here at Jackson Park. Do you think that's why sometimes communities get overlooked when it comes to politics is because we tend to paint in broad sh- strokes instead of saying this community has very specific needs that need to be addressed differently than what we see in other communities. I I do believe sometimes that that occurs um, is they think it's a one-stop shop and yeah, we're going to do this and this is going to fix everything. And that's not the case. Mm -hmm. You have to dissect the district just like you have certain streets. We just got Market Street done. Thank you to our councilman, Al Austin, who worked for years to get that done, right? So now Market Street's not an issue, right? But if you go down 53rd Street, boy, the the cops may think that you're intoxicated because your car has to swerve like this to get through the potholes. Mm -hmm. You know, there's there's certain streets that still need attention, right? Mm -hmm. So you can't say, yay, we got Market Street done. We're good. All the streets are paved. No, they're not, right? So every, you have to go, inch by inch, street by street, neighborhood by neighborhood to identify what the issues are and then outline a timeline on when are we going to attack each of these. Mm -hmm. You ran for um, Long Beach Unified School District in 2022. Uh, What was your motivation to run for the the school board? You know, again, I'm very passionate about serving my community (laughs) and I spent decades being involved. So as a businesswoman, being a board member for multiple nonprofits in equity, I'm also the equity and human relations commissioner. I have a commission meeting this evening. So make sure you guys go and attend. No, (laughs) yeah, right. um, (laughs) Yes. um, I'm proud to be involved in multiple capacities because that offers you a unique perspective right? Through all of these different lenses. And, and I've been like that since I was young and had a passion for always serving others. Like I said, I was junior class president at ASB, always had this passion. My focus is serving North Long Beach residents. Coming out of Pepperdine with my doctorate degree and having a postdoctoral going on, it seemed fitting for me at the time. It didn't work out, but I will always step up if there's an opportunity because I want to see things get done for my community. And I'm at a point in my life where I am qualified. So I would be doing a disservice to my city if I did not step up Mm -hmm. to serve. So what did did your husband say when you said, hey, you know what? I'm going to run for the 8th district. I had to have a family meeting. (laughs) (laughs) And um, he and I said, "Okay, so. just want you guys to know there's an opportunity and they all just kind of look at me. And I said, um, but to make a difference for all these grandkids. And my husband was actually the first one to say, I I wouldn't expect anything less. Hmm. You know, he's very support. He's very quiet. Most people don't think he says a lot. And I always Mm -hmm. tease him because I say, what do you mean? He talks all the time. (laughs) (laughs) But in front of people, he does not say much. And so Mm -hmm. he is one of my, I'm not going to say he's my number one fan because that belongs to my mom because she's my (laughs) number one supporter, always has been since I was the wee crawling around on the ground. But he is definitely my number two supporter. Did you happen to have a a conversation with Councilman Al Austin when you said, hey, this is something I want to do? Oh, absolutely. I I, what is. (laughs) I would have definitely, that's, that was actually before I even spoke to my family, I had that conversation. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> There's no need to even have that conversation. <laughs> He's looking like, huh? You know, right. but yes, he did. And, and Al was very supportive. Um, he, my mom um, had reached out to Al and, and he, she asked, you know, 
my daughter's ready. Can you can you have a conversation with her? And this was a couple of years ago, um, right when I was getting ready to finish up school and just kind of help guide. Because one thing we we, we are doing better now, but one thing we did, really didn't have is really mentoring people mm. to get into these positions, right? Um, and that's something that I would definitely be a champion for. But after hearing the state of the union last night, it's something that's already moving into play. Mm-hmm. And I would definitely support that because having our youngsters, you know, at, you, you identify the people who are running for presidents and junior in junior offices and things like that continue to mentor them you know and then there's the leadership long beach where they have the junior group those are going to be your next leaders who help shape our city yeah i'm i'm glad that you mentioned that cuz al austin is so beloved and that's one of the things that i've seen every time i interview um most politicians i won't say all like uh our mayor Rex Richardson, he was on this track very early on in in his life. But mostly when I find people who get into politics, it's because they see something in their community that's not being addressed and they want to affect change. So do you think, I I wonder this, and only because, you know, I have a background in the music industry as well. And one of the reasons why I think the music industry is God awful is because it's business people running the, the music industry instead of people who are really passionate about music. So I wonder while I, while I do agree, we need to cultivate leadership. I wonder if we are fast tracking people to politics and politics becomes a business instead of it being a passion to affect their community. So I just want to get your thoughts on that. What do you, do you think, which, which way do you think is best? (laughs) It's tough to say which one is best, but I but I completely agree with you. Um, if someone doesn't have a passion for making change and especially change that impacts them, right? Mm-hmm. Being the only candidate born and raised in Long Beach, you know, it, it's a it's deep roots that I have. I got four generations that live right here in this eighth district, right? Mm-hmm. So when you're having the passion of wanting to change. It's because you know that next generation is going to be here. It's You have an obligation to try to make things better. I have so many people on my street, Dr. Betty down the way, Adriana next door. You know, we have so many youngsters now to where it's like, you know, and I've been in my home now for 22 years and then over right around the corner off of Cerritos for another eight years. So I've been living in this district for almost 30 years, right? Right. We have an obligation to want to make a change for the better. Okay, so we've talked a lot of politics, and I just want to get to know you a little bit personally. What's your favorite restaurant in Long Beach? Oh, my favorite restaurant. Okay. (laughs) So I will start with right here in the 8th. And unfortunately, after the incident, but the bougie crab was yum, yum. Um, But my favorite restaurant, we tend to frequently um, go to Knowles or DoorDash from Knowles, just because, you know, those, um, the Kogi tacos (laughs) Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. are yummy, yummy. Um, But then you go next down to Second Street, you know, um, that is delicious. Um, the, the shrimp taquitos, man, <laughs> are to oh, die. Oh, see, I got to get those. <laughs> oh, girl, you have got to try those. They are yummy, yummy. Um, my thing is, uh, my youngest daughter and I, we're like foodies. Mm-hmm. So we really like, uh, to go to all kinds of food. Georgia's now, if you want to go up into where the airport is, mm-hmm. they're, uh, fried fish, catfish. Mm. <laughs> Okay. You know? <laughs> yeah. And then we even have right here, right around the corner from my house, you know, we have um, where we have Gilbert and his restaurant mm-hmm. and he has the Louis, the Nolens feel right with the gumbo. And so, I mean, there's so many, we are so blessed in Long Beach. Yes. There are so many food places. Mexican food is OMG. Right. I just I mean the La Taquilleta off of Carson, one of my favorite Lola's. If you go off of Atlantic, it's just I I, I could talk food all day. <laughs> I, can, I see that. I love it. <laughs> you you pick a genre and we will talk about it. Cause Mexican and Italian are my favorite, but then you know, it just depends on breakfast food. Oh, talk about the pan. Yeah. Oh man. Okay. So 
I'll stop. Okay, there. so this one this one's gonna be a little hard. So I need you to put on your embody your 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 rhythm and your blues. If you had a song that could totally describe you and your journey up until now, what song would that be? Um, <laughs> I told you it's gonna be a little harder. <laughs> this is funny. This is funny. Okay, so I have. Can I say two? It's funny you say yes. that because I just told somebody. You know, I have an extreme case of Achilles tendonitis going on. So I'm walking around oh. in a boot. Okay. I have plantar fasciitis in my right foot. I just had to go and I have to go check out my eye. And so I told somebody, Elton John, I'm still standing after all this time. <laughs> That's my, I mean, come on. It's like, how many things can go wrong when you're out here campaigning, right. but you got to still get up and go canvas. You still got to make your phone calls as I'm trying to read the phone numbers through my eye. So mm -hmm. don't laugh because my eye looks like this, but I really love uh, Mary J as well. Just fine. You know, that's yes. my, while I was doing my doctorate, I would tell my daughter, you got to get into your groove. You just put on some Mary J and you just start mm -hmm. jamming. Even if you got the butterflies, it loosens <laughs> you up and you just start singing and you're ready to do your interview or presentation. So I love yeah. that. <laughs> this has been great. Thank you so much, Dr. Sharif, for, for coming on. Um, I'm going to give you the floor and just take your time and just really tell the people why you deserve their vote in March. I deserve your vote because I am a proud mom, a grandmother, AKA honey, because my grandkids call me honey. And I'm an experienced business leader who was born and raised in Long Beach. I got four generations in my family who are living and invested. We've been renters, we've been homeowners for the future of the council of this eighth district. The residents of Long Beach deserve a champion who's going to take action and deliver results. I know the ins and outs of North Long Beach. I know what families are going through, the cost of housing, groceries, gas. It's, it's, it's out of control. And some people don't even feel safe in their own neighborhoods. I will work tirelessly to address these issues and ensure that the people have a voice and listen to their needs that's unique to their districts. I want us to see a future for our generations that's vibrant, that's inclusive, safe, and livable. As a long-term resident of Long Beach, I got a deep passion of transforming our city, and I have a solid sense of commitment for the future of our 8th district and keeping Long Beach strong, safe, prosperous, and economically sustainable. So on March 5th, I think the first drop of ballots come February 5th, I'm asking people to check the facts and vote for bats. Dr. Sharifa Bats. I like that. You got a rhyme to it and everything. I, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> My Thank youngest you daughter, Mia, came up with that. <laughs> oh, tell, tell her she did good. I like that. It's memorable. I love that for sure. Thank you so much. It was great to get to know you personally, to know more about your background. I obviously am going to be calling you because I'm still trying to learn Long Beach when it comes to food. So it's good to know that I can call you and ask you about that. Oh, yeah. I thank you for encouraging the listeners to go out and vote. It's so important. Our local imp politics impact us so greatly. And so please make sure you go out and vote. Again, you can get all the information you need at lbpost.com. Make sure, like she said, know the facts when you go to the polls or when, before you mail in your ballot. We're going to do everything we can to help you make an informed decision. So again, check us out at lbpost.com. Once again, I'm Jackie Ray. And remember, if you have to speak a word, make it a good one. We'll see you next time. Oh.